Hi, I'm Donna Miller. I'm going to show you how to color in your fonts so that they can be used for engraving, foiling, or if you just want to turn any font solid for a writing style font. So the first thing we're going to need to do is to download some extra software that's not already embedded into Inkscape. This is an AxiDraw software and it's going to give us the ability to color in our fonts. Now for this software, I will link it in the description below. So if you have a Mac, you want to scroll down and on the quick install, it's the second one on here, you're going to want to click that link. Now if you have a Windows computer, you're going to want to scroll down a little bit further and right next to the number two is the link that you're going to want to click. Now once you're back in Inkscape, you'll know that this works because if you click on Extensions, you'll see an extension that says AxiDraw. Now we're going to click the A over here and we're going to draw a text box. So you just need to click off to the side and drag a window to create a text box. Now I have already created a character map of the text that I'm going to use. So I'm just going to right click and paste my text in. I have a video of how to get the special characters in the character map. So please check out the video below in the description if you're interested in that. Now I have a hard time seeing my font here because it's so small. So we're going to zoom in. To zoom in, you just hold the control button on the keyboard and use the wheel and scroll up on the wheel to zoom in. Now this is not the real font that I had used. So I'm going to click and drag to highlight my font and I'm going to go up to the top and I'm going to change this to the real font that I actually used. And the real font that I used was the Hello Honey font. So for whatever reason that didn't work, it didn't give me the option to scroll down. So I'm now going to scroll down and select the correct font. Okay, so we're gonna zoom in again. So if you recall to zoom, you hold control on the keyboard, use the mouse wheel and go up to zoom in and down to zoom out. Okay, so now we're going to select all of our text. So you can either click and drag over top of your font or you could use the arrow button to the side to select your text. We're going to weld this. So that is path and then union. That's the equivalent of welding so we don't have all of the slits in between the letters that you can't see. Okay, so now we need to turn the background to be white so that you can actually see the cross hatching when we go to select all that. So you're gonna click the paint bucket and on the top, I like to make the font just a little bit thicker at the same so time. So I'm gonna change the grow and the shrink by to 0.3 so that my font is actually going to be just a little bit thicker but not a lot thicker. Now at the bottom of the screen, you're going to want to change the color to being white. So that way you'll be able to see the cross hatchings. Once you select your color as being white, then you want to click on the black parts of your font or your words. Now if you click and drag off of here, you're going to notice that we lose the dot in our eye and you can see the black original is still there. This is going to happen every single time because we're going to need to group these two pieces together. And right now the dot is considered separate from the rest of it. So here's how we're going to fix that. So to fix that problem, we're going to click on the dot. You're going to hold the shift button on the keyboard and then you're going to click on the rest of the words. This is going to select both of them at the same time. Then you're going to go to path and union and that will weld these two words together so that they will no longer be separated and they will move together as one piece. So if we hadn't weld those two pieces together, when you go to do the actual cross hatching, what's going to happen is all of the pieces will be cross hatched except for the dot or vice versa, depending on which one's selected when you're cross hatching at that particular point in time. So let's go through the steps now on how to color in your words and what the options are. So you're gonna to go to extensions 
and then you're going to go to Axie Draw Utilities and then the Hatch Fill. So a new window will pop up. The first thing you're going to want to do is select the Live Preview button at the bottom of that screen so you can see what's going on. Now the next thing you're going to want to look at is the hatch spacing and the hatch angle in degrees. Now the spacing is how far apart the lines are going to be drawn and then the hatch angle is how steep they're going to be. So on this particular design, if I made that hatch angle to be 45 degrees, then I may not get some pieces of that heart because it's such a steep angle and you can see on the corners of that heart, it's not very steep. So this is going to be various depending on what your image is that you're trying to do here. So I'm going to lower my hatch angle to be smaller than that. And you can see as I increase the hatch spacing to being a 0.9, that this really gets wider gaps in between the spaces on here. So you're going to have to manipulate this and figure out what you like best for your particular image. So if you checkbox the crosshatch, that's going to make crisscrosses over or across your words. This would be really great if you're using the foiling quill. Since I'm going to be engraving, you could use this, but I just didn't personally like the look of that, and that's just a personal preference. Now the next one, the connect by nearby ends option, if you look, you can see that they squiggle down back and forth across the words there. If you uncheck that option and you don't have that check boxed in, then the lines turn just plain straight across and there's no connections between the ends. Again, I think this one's a personal preference on what you prefer. If you like that look of them crossing by or you don't like that look. So the last option we're gonna look at is the insert fill from edges. And if you uncheck that box, what's going to happen is, as you can see in this picture here, it's going to color outside of the lines and it's gonna have a very jaggedy look to it. And you can see on the E on the edge of that picture that the, it, it's all solid in and there's not a hole for the E. So that's that look, if you uncheck that box, that's the setting that you're going to get. Now, if you check box that and you have it selected, it's going to look more like this picture where it colored around the outside edges and then it colored in the middle of every word. Now, if you look to the left at that E, you can see that it's still colored in and there's still not a hole on there. That's going to depend on the settings that you choose for your inset distance and the tolerance. I usually only change the inset distance. The smaller that number is, then the closer it's going to be to coloring on the line. The farther away it is, then you're going to get a little gaps away from that line. And it really just depends on your preference. And it also depends on what size of tip that you're using for your engraving or your foiling or your coloring it in. If you use a bolder tip, it's going to look different than if you use a fine tip. So you can see in the pictures here, the one above is a fine tip, which is what the engraving is going to be. And the one below is a little bit of a bolder tip. Those are the normal felt tips that the Cricut pins come with. So if you're looking at the engraving aspect, you're going to want to use the fine tip. So my official settings was the hatch spacing was 0 0.5. The hatch angle was 20. I did not check box the cross hatch. I did check box the connect nearby ends and I left that at three. I check box the insert fill from edges and left that at 0 0.4 and my tolerance I left at 3.2. And so now you're going to select the other items and you're going to click on them and hit the delete button on the keyboard to delete those. So now we're going to save our project. So you'll just go File, Save As, and you'll save your project as whatever you want to save it as. So now we're going to go into Cricut Design Space and you're going to upload your image and add in your tags that you want to remember your image by. 
So when you upload your image and you bring it in, it always looks like it didn't do anything. And that's because you need to change the position on the X and the Y axis because they always start as a negative, which is not on the mat. And you need to change those to be a positive number. I like to usually pick five and five, and that will put it at the middle of your mat. Okay, so if you look at the layers panel off to the side, you can see that I have two separate layers here. And I'm just enlarging the image so that we can actually see that. So if you click on one of the eyeballs, that's going to let you see what is actually going on with your layers. So as you unclick one of the eyeballs and hide it, you can see the other layer. So now I lost my outline when I hid that one part of the eyeball. So we're going to need to fix this problem first. So all we need to do is go to the bottom of the layers panel and hit the attach button. If we did not do this step when you went to go to make it, you would have two items separated from each other. One with just the outline and one with the squiggles in the middle of the outline. So this fixes that problem altogether. So now I'm just bringing in a shape, which is a triangle, because that is the shape of my pie server. You can use any shape as your template. And you need to size your shape down. Mine was a two width and four for the height. Yours may be different. It just depends on where you buy yours from. I bought mine from Amazon. So the next step should be to change your line type from cut to either engrave or writing style, depending on if you're writing or using the foil coil. I did not do that step and did not realize what I had done wrong until I went back to edit this video. So I'm hoping that this will save you a lot of frustration on your end too. So you want to size your image down to your template to make sure that it's going to fit on whatever you're engraving or foiling. And then you want to bring that off to the side and you want to duplicate this. If you are engraving, this step's important. You want to duplicate it three times. If you're not engraving, then you can skip this step. So then you're going to click and drag over all of them, go up to the align and hit the center button. And that's going to center all of these together. Then go off to the side and hit the attach button. And what this is going to do is this is going to engrave four different times in the exact same spot. So you get a nice, crisp, deep engraving. So the next thing you want to do is hit the make it button at the top and wait for your Cricut to sort your mats. Once you have that, select the one with the triangle, click on it, and then click the three dots and pick the one that says move item to other mat and checkbox the one that has your writing on it. Now you want to move the triangle down so that the center of it is on the sixth line, but the bottom of it is on the 11 line and the top part is on the seven line. And then you want to move your image to be in the center of your triangle. Once you have that positioned exactly like that, then you're going to click the three dots on the triangle and you're going to hide your triangle. And then you're going to hit the make it button at the bottom and you're going to select your material. Now this is the part where I struggled because when I went to browse all my materials, I was looking for stainless steel and the stainless steel option never shows up because I never changed mine from cutting to engraving and that's when I didn't have that option. And unfortunately, I didn't figure this out until I was editing the video of what I did wrong. And I actually went through and redid my entire project from start to finish again. So hopefully this will save you a lot of heartache and headache that I went through. So when you come to your actual mat, you need to use the strong grip mat. That's the purple mat. And so when you place your pie server on there, you want to look for the six, which is in the center, and you want the bottom to be at the 11. And this is where I messed up. So you can see that I'm placing this down here, 
And it's very important that the top of the Pi server is at the seven line. It needs to be right below the seven line. And you can see up here, mine is not, mine's above the seven line. That's a big mistake. And you'll see what's gonna happen once I go to engrave this. So let me show you where the proper placement should be. So the proper placement is, is the top of the Pi server needs to be right below the seven line on there. And then the bottom, you just want to get it as centered across the 11 as much as you can. So now you want to get some painter's tape and you're going to want to tape down the sides of the Pi server. This will ensure that it will not shift during the engraving process. And if it would shift during the engraving process, that's going to cause an overlap and it's going to ruin your project. So this just ensures that it's down nice and sturdy. I didn't like to get too close to the center, so I kept as close to the edges as I could because I don't really know exactly how far in the middle my actual engraving was going to take place. So if you look at my actual machine, the most important thing to notice is that all of the white rings are moved over to the right hand side of my machine. That's going to allow the extra depth for your Pi server to move back and forth through your Cricut machine. If you don't move those rings over, you're probably going to run into problems. Now I'm using the actual engraver that was made from the Cricut people, and I'm just putting that in the clamp and I'm just going to tighten down the clamp. And then it's going to be important that you kind of guide your mat in so you hold the bottom underneath of your mat where all of the weight is so that way you're not going to bend your mat or anything as you're putting this in. And then go ahead and hit the go button. So the only time you really need to babysit this whole process is while you're loading the mat because the actual cutting part will take about 15 minutes, give or take a few. So as the machine is engraving, I want you to pay attention to the handle in this video. The handle is going to get pushed down and that should not happen. And that is because of the placement that I had at the beginning. So when your project is finished and you're getting ready to take it off the mat, it's going to have some metal shards on there. And what I do is I take off my painter's tape and I pick up all of those leftover pieces with the tape. You don't want to touch that with your fingers because if you do, you could cut yourself because it, it could potentially be very sharp. So always use your tape before you go and touch anything. So here's a picture of my finished project and it looks very off-centered and it's very hard to read and that is because my placement was not underneath or right at the seven. Mine was above the seven and because of that, the metal bar on the Cricut was hitting the back end of the spoon, which you can't really see it, but it did shift the spoon while it was engraving and that caused it to be off-centered. So all four of our attached layers that we had were all on top of each other and they were off-centered. So with the proper placement of the top of the serving spoon being right at the seven or below the seven, you get much better engraving and it looks fabulous. So thank you so much for joining me today. I hope that you learned something new. Please click like, subscribe, and share. And don't forget to hit that bell so you don't miss out on anything.